My name is Alan Wellenstein. I run our solution design practice at DataArt. Solution design is a fixed price, fixed schedule project, wherein we make sure that the project is set up for success. That starts with a careful articulation of what we call the shape of the project. We have the solution design framework that articulates what are the outcomes we're looking for, not just what features are we building, but what are the outcomes that this thing needs to accomplish at the end to be successful? What are the priorities ahead of us? What are the high level ideas of scope, both long term, five years out, what does this thing eventually need to do? But then importantly, what is a, a small enough piece for the MVP to get out there and start extracting the value? What are the constraints that this solution needs to fit within budget, schedule, regulatory, technical uh, uh, requirements that it needs to fit within, et cetera? And then what are the assumptions that make this all doable within those constraints? We want to make sure that we begin a project with something that is feasible and that we believe will be successful. That's the first part, putting together that documentation that articulates all of that. Then we meet with all of the stakeholders, anybody who will be touched by this, and we carefully go through to make sure that they agree with the articulation of that project shape. What we often discover is that we learn things during that process where we didn't get it quite right. Some of our assumptions were wrong, some of the priorities were wrong, sometimes we didn't even know important things that we had to be concerned about. Obviously, the sooner we learn those things, the greater chance we have to address them during this process. We then use the, the, the shape of that project to articulate all of the challenges that we have to solve. Where are the biggest unknowns? Where are the biggest assumptions that if we don't get right, have a disproportionate chance to blow up the emerging solution? And we use that to prioritize specific things that we're going to do. Research tasks, prototypes we're going to build, proofs of concepts we're going to build. And then we start the process iteratively focused on the biggest risk. When I'm asked what the deliverable of a solution design is, um, my response is usually to not think so much about the deliverable as the goal of a solution design as much as the process. Because what we typically know at the beginning of a solution design is very high level understanding of what the objectives are that the company is trying to accomplish, but often there are more questions than there are answers. So it's hard for us to say precisely what the answer is going to be, but what we do know how to do is the process to get more clarity. What people are paying for in a solution design is not the report at the end of it, but the process to get them to more clarity as an organization. The reason we do a solution design is ultimately to make sure that we can deliver the project in the next phase successfully. What are the inputs to that? Well, we need to make sure that we have very good understanding of the outcomes, that we have created a, a set of features that we know meets those outcomes. When we look at this from a product management lens, we think about four risks that we're focused on. We want to make sure the project is valuable. We want to understand where is the value driven from this, where are we going to save money, where are we going to make the company money, et cetera. We want to make sure it's usable. You can have a system that's valuable, but if it's not usable, that value is of no use. We don't, and that's usable both for people and systems that need to interact with it. We have to make sure it's feasible. We have to make sure that within the constraints, budget, schedule, regulatory constraints, that what we're suggesting building is actually accomplishable. And finally, we have to make sure it's viable. That ties all of those things together, but then it adds things like um, you know, regulatory constraints and compliance constraints within the organization, SDLC requirements that the company may have that would put pressures on them. The principles underpinning solution design are in every one of the projects that we do. Um, our focus is on delivering value, not on delivering specific features. And so the way we accomplish that is we always make sure that as we're working on a project that everyone on the team has a deep understanding of the outcomes that this project is meant to accomplish and that we have a, a shared understanding of how we're going to accomplish those and look out for the risks that, befail, that, that cause many projects to fail. Some projects have an upfront solution design, which is literally just a solution design project, and some projects have a solution design phase towards the beginning of the engagement.